Right, the uh, finance committee. We basically talked about um, what we're getting from Minnesota School of Finance. It's a long range planning model, as well as um, we can uh, put our capital planning model into that. And then also the negotiation software that we get from them and where we were on that. I would say that about sums it up. Anyone else have anything to add? Sounds about right. Crystal, anything you would add? Good? Okay. And calendar committee. It's on the list, so I don't know who the calendar committee is. Um, we met in January, I believe, and there should be uh, there should be a there was a calendar, a proposed calendar on our board packet. So. Okay. That wasn't any change from the meeting, right? Right. Did anybody have any questions on that? As far as the proposed calendar? I was wondering about the um, Easter Monday holiday that we are addressing via a board. That's this year. That's this fifth year. year. Yep. But are we going to run into that next year or was Basically, you're saying build in more snow days or something. Well, there were four different snow days built into that calendar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, the, and I. One was early on, January. Mm -hmm. There was an April one, but I didn't. Yeah. yeah. I didn't look up when February Easter 1. was. And I don't remember. And I didn't I think there was one in January. <coughs> and I should have done that. No, it was February. February, I want to say 19th. Normally, that's not a, snow, a make up snow day because it's right. a paid holiday for some people. Right. But this year was so but much, we had to have it. Yeah, and it because there was a four day weekend in April. Right? Yep, and there's a four day weekend in March, and I just don't remember which <coughs> Easter fell on one of the two of them. The twenty first, twenty second. The twenty second is that Easter Monday. Yep. Yeah. No, but we're talking about in twenty twenty. Oh, twenty twenty. Yeah, but it's the same basic. Yeah, I think it was the twentieth or something of that nature was the day that was designated. I don't. I can call Easter it up. It'll take me forever on my computer. April 22nd this year is the It says next meeting. year it's April 10th through the 13th. Okay. And then what's the March so then, date though? So then the 13th would be Easter Monday, yep. Yeah. And, and yeah. that is a makeup snow day for next year. Okay. If we need it. Okay. So I was just wondering if we're going to run into the same issue again, potentially, right? Yes. That yes. we're, okay. As of right now, yeah. And I didn't know if that was a oversight or a, if that's the process we're going to. That's what they did this year, so yeah. then we just followed it for next year. Yeah. So specifically, because I don't think I understand the finances, and that's what you're asking is yeah. the well, way I read. <laughs> so did, I don't know if Jeff kind of gave you guys a heads up for this year, it's being proposed that we use April 22nd as a makeup day. Well, some of our staff is going, that's a paid holiday for them. So they're going to get paid their holiday pay for that day, and then they're going to get paid for their shift that they work that day. It's not at time and a half though, because according to their contract, if school is not in session is when you get time and a half. So if it's in session, you just get paid. Jeff so did furnish of, that for us. Did. Okay, mm -hmm. so yes, so as of now, I mean, yeah, we're gonna pay. Pay twice. Yes, and I that's mean, gonna happen next year. If, if that is Easter Monday, I don't know about <coughs> on the calendar committee, but. Well, yeah. it's still a wash unless Unless we don't make up the snow day at all, if we just leave it, then there's no right. no cost to it. If we make it up after, uh, if we extend the school year and make it up that way or whatever, or something like that, it's it's still a wash. I mean, it'd be, we'd be paying them the same amount because we'd have to pay them on that day that they work, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the only way. Well, they. But they would be they working work anyway. Yeah, they'd they be on that other day. So. employees. I'm thinking by the way we're talking about it, we'd like to use that snow day as the last possible alternative because we right, will right. end up paying them twice. Right. Mm -hmm. And you, it says in there, uh, we see no fiscal impact, but there is a fiscal impact. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not significant, but there's a decent That's amount of money changing hands right there. So we'd want that as the number four day out of the four, the last right, yeah. least used. Because I don't know how you really change it. I mean, a year like this, you're stuck using the days you have unless we want to go into May and we're going to educate better I think in the middle of April than we are you know with a school force on the 29th of May right the only question then comes up is do we think there's going to be any more snow days well now we're talking this year yeah this year and we sort of have that 
Coffee room talk. doesn't allow it. No. Uh, oh, no, I'll put that in the form of a formal yeah. motion. Yeah, right. <laughs> Brian, any, Not a workshop, no. Brian, any experience with flex time? I, I see. I've been hearing that a bunch of school districts are are alleviating their school calendar snow days with it. Is, is there any possibility that we we have that? Um, Jeff and I haven't talked specifically about it. Um, there are some schools that are actually going like starting 50 minutes earlier, adding. X amount of minutes to their schedule, or maybe go on 50 minutes longer at the end to actually make up a whole day during during a week. Um, so there's some of those different things. Um, were there? Did they give some type of different uh, online? Yeah. On, online things. Oh, yeah. like e-learning is one. Yeah. Key, yeah. 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 I, and I, I, the districts. I think they were talking about Farmington actually when I heard oh. it on the radio, but but they were. I mean, all the kids had access to the internet. But it, it, what I found interesting, you know, was that it typically didn't even have to be done like that day. It was like if they got bad assignments in yeah. from those teachers, that it would be counted as a day. And they're, they're, we don't have yeah. any snow days. We just do it this way. Yeah. You know, the IT they just world. had to log in sometime. Yep. That meant they accepted the assignment. And that also alleviated because where I brought that, I was talking about it with Jeff, and the, there's always the problem well, what if a kid doesn't have internet or something that I have access to a computer? <coughs> and that was what it was. It's, it doesn't have to be made up that day, it's just they could, right. whenever they had access right. to a computer yep. or something like that, then it could be made up or get a, a hard copy packet or whatever, whatever the assignment was. I'm, I'm sure after this winter, I mean, the whole state is experiencing what we are. I think we're probably one of the luckier ones, actually. There's yeah. been a, that there, there's going to be some uh, some new ways of addressing those calendar days. And our kids are just tougher. Yep. Hmm? Our kids are just tougher. Yeah. The, the other thing that I remember from some of the information Jeff um, sent out to us is our student days aren't really a a huge issue because we have 172 on the calendar yep. and, and the mandate by state law is 165. So it's not as big an issue other than they are losing that day of learning, but we are still meeting the state statute. They're only, it's the hourly funding formula ones and from what he said it didn't amount to that huge right. amount, exactly. amount of yeah. changes that Correct well, I guess I don't know for sure what he's what he okay. was referring to. Well, I, he I mean, talked about we're not going to have our we won't have students in school that day, right? So we, you know, like legally, that way. they have to be go to school 165 days. Okay, we yes. got that covered because we go 172. Even if we drop one or two here and there, we're still above the legal limit, so we just still get the funding. But he had mentioned that there are certain ones that the Pre-K. The ECS one. Well, yeah, for right. voluntary pre-K, you have to have so many right. hours. Yes, yeah. yeah. Too. And I think. And that determines what. Amount I believe of it was ECFE. They have. Yeah. 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 They have different rates. Well, I guess while we're on it, do we want to discuss any more in the working session about calendar? Because I think that's coming up on the board agenda for approving. The change to the 22nd, unless that change it's on there. Is that still in there? Yep. yep. It right, is. right in the bottom, the new business. Uh, I don't know any thoughts on the matter before we continue on, since we're on a calendar thing. No, I guess I just wanted to clarify that we are potentially setting ourselves up to run into the same yep. issue we are this year now. Because initially Jeff said he didn't want to do that, do that. and use that one. Yep. And that. I thought is why we approved a different one. Usually, though, the three March days. Yeah. Usually, the three days has covered it. Yeah. 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 And then he added that as a fourth makeup day, if if needed. Okay. Easter Monday one. Yeah. You have that right, Cindy? Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? Um, actually, I have one question. I just want to put this out to the board. Um, historically speaking, we've always graduated before Memorial Day, whether it was a Sunday or if it was a 
Friday night that we switched to. Take a look at the schedule. Um, we are looking at going until Thursday, um, Thursday the 28th next year, as far as for me. Um, I personally would like to have the seniors still graduate on Friday the 22nd. We still have school for the rest of the students, uh, you know, on the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But we don't have to agree upon that right now. But well, didn't we discuss that at the calendar committee? Weren't you I, there? Well, I cannot remember <laughs> what. I think we did. What did the committee come up with? This calendar. <laughs> yeah. So that's just food for thought later on as far as. Oh, yeah, graduation May 29th. All right, anyone else? We'll move along to the superintendent. And since he's not here, um, well, we've, back, well, we've got the enrollment date update. Um, so uh, in the elementary, we've lost one student. We've gone from 258 to 257. And in the high school, we've gained three students from 214 to 217. So we're Plus two. Any questions on the enrollment update? Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. Any else for us? Uh, that's the only thing Mr. Nelson had on it, so All that's right. the only thing I'll discuss. <laughs> Business office. What you got, Crystal? Not much. I provided you all with the budget report, and we're still looking to be on track for a balanced budget this year. We'll see if we need to bring a revised budget probably like April time if we need to revise it or not. If there's not a significant change, we'll just leave it as is. But if there is, depending upon enrollment at the time, then okay. we'll bring that then. Based on the booking nature of our finance committee meeting, I'd say they were pretty much on target for everything. Yeah, because like I had told them at the finance committee, we have the financial planning model up and running so we can project five years out and based upon what goals we want, which 25% is our the school policy goal for on assigned fund balance. So you can actually project out to see, okay, if we change this a little bit, how close are we going to get to our goal? Or if we change this this way, if we increase salaries, if we need, you know, all that, you can put all that stuff in there. And then with that model comes the enrollment projections that you, they create from the different census and stuff like that. And you bring that into the model and then move that. Okay. Use it. Any questions? Anyone? Moving on then. High school principal. Well, one of the biggest things we're working on right now is course registration. Well, what we did last Friday is we brought the 7th through 11th grade students um, into the auditorium, and teachers were able to talk about their electives. We were in there for about 45 minutes. Uh, all the different classes we wanted to offer for next year, and Students were able to ask questions about those classes. And then what I did is I emailed all the students the course registration uh, guidebook, and they had their, their course registration sheet that had all their classes listed on it. And so students will have that have until Wednesday of this week to get their, their uh, paper signed and get it back to the high school office. And then on Thursday this week, uh, we're going to be sitting down with the students and going through and and the, uh, the Interflex Advisory uh, teachers are going to be able to talk to the students and help them out with any classes they want to choose or if they have any questions on their course uh, registration material. And then uh, next Monday, we are going to be registering next year's uh, sophomores and actually juniors and seniors. Tuesday, we'll do sophomores and freshmen. And Wednesday, we'll do seventh and eighth grade. So by the end of, of next Wednesday, the only group, the only class that we want to have registered is going to be this year's sixth graders that will be next year's seventh graders. So we'll have a pretty good idea on what students want uh, as far as elective tech classes. Uh, and, and I'll start working on the schedule and we'll talk to the students about uh, online classes and some of the different things that, that they want that way. So it goes pretty fast, but it, it, it's really nice of getting that information and then being able to start looking at it and you know kind of chew on it and basically 
start building the schedule for next year. So hopefully by end of March, we'll be able to have all the information all set ready to go and we'll be able to have uh, um, class, class schedule as far as classes that we are going to be able to offer for next year. I guess questions on that? Do you ever get any parental input on that? I mean, I know you'd ideally in a good in the real world. As far as from the students with the registry? Yeah. yeah, the parents are supposed to sign the student's form. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, in terms of kibitzing, actually offering them some ideas about that, you, you don't hear from parents too much, or you just couldn't tell how much they're involved with it? Um, not too much. Yeah. I mean, as far as my door's always open with phones and emails, I do get a few calls here and there, but um, as far as uh, um, getting students registered, it's it's working the teachers and working the students working together, and then, um, like for example, seventh, eighth, and ninth graders, they only have they have two elective type classes that they can get. Seventh graders and eighth graders, it's it's a uh, band choir or study hall, and as freshmen, that's when all those other classes start opening up for them. I, I don't think I'm necessarily asking the question for practical value, okay. uh, it, it, so much as I'm just trying to. We struggled with. Uh, parental surveys in the past. Do you remember right. that a couple times? Just looking at little ways you can get your foot in the door with, where a parent has some responsibility for that student's classwork. You know, any little bit we could have. Okay. You know, where okay, you know, Johnny and I picked the English course. Let's make sure we live up to how we were going to. You know, maybe get a little bit of commitment on that side of things too. I mean, anything we can do at that point would be better, right? Yep, absolutely. So I don't know how you make that happen. So throwing okay. it in your court and saying good luck with it. <laughs> Well, thank you. Um, you know, sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. Um, you know, there's there's only certain so there's only certain classes that we can offer as far as electives and and and, and requires. Uh, but that's actually a great idea is, is to get parental uh, input as far as some of the classes we've been talking about um, small engines and and, and uh, uh, welding and uh, maybe a little more home ec slash culinary arts type programs. Um, that would be an awesome thing to do. Maybe get some more parental input on that. Yeah. Anyone else? All right. We'll move on to the activities director. Uh, winter sports are wrapping up. Hockey finished up last Thursday in War Road with a very respectable showing. Four to one loss against a very good team. So they finish up their season. Girls basketball starts playoffs on Thursday, hosting Kelly are here at 7 o'clock. Uh, boys basketball's last regular season game is tomorrow night against Roseau, and then they'll start playoffs the following Tuesday, the 5th of March. Probably going to be a great one. Uh, spring sports meeting is going to be at 5 o'clock on the 28th, originally scheduled for 7 o'clock, but with the girls, or 6 o'clock, but with the girls basketball game being that night, we moved it up to 5 o'clock. I sent out a, a student email alert today so that people are aware of the spring sports meeting for that. So, spring sports are going to be starting here the second Monday in April with baseball, softball, and track. Uh, not going on there. Um, I got for that piece right there. Uh, concession stands is the next thing done on there. The health inspector went out to the concession stand last Friday or last fall and basically said that the only thing you can sell out of it is prepackaged foods. Uh, nothing out of a crock pot, nothing or whatever. Fixed hot dogs, even stuff that you buy pizza from somewhere else and bring it in, fixing popcorn. But until you have hot and cold running water in there. Um, you can't sell anything else out of there. Uh, they said the floors are okay, the cement, the countertops are fine until they fail. Once they fail, they need to be replaced with uh, stainless steel. Um, so, looking short term, we'd have to get water over there at, at a minimum to make it usable to serve hot foods out of there. Uh, anything like crock pot, hot dogs. Um, I've talked with Reed, I've talked with Brent, I've talked with Mr. Novak a little bit. Um, instead of dumping a lot of money into that concession stand, we can take a much better option. We can look for a trailer that's ready to go. 
That way you can use it at the football game, you can use it at the baseball field, you can use it at the softball field. Uh, short term, five, ten years, whatever short term is, we don't want a prior in it, we don't want a griddle in it, we just want to be able to do the, the hot foods out of it that we can. So keep it simple. Uh, but whatever we look for, we want it to be ready to go. We don't want to retrofit anything, we don't want to mess with anything like that. And that's probably somewhere around the five thousand dollar range to find what we're looking for. We don't care if it's a truck or a trailer, whichever one we fit our needs the best. We both have their pluses and minuses. Uh, that's the direction that we'd like to see as we will go with it. So eventually, long term, yeah, we'd love to get something permanent over there. Build out the concession stand underneath the bleachers, bathrooms, all that type of stuff. But for now. That would be our best solution. Look for a trailer. And there's water over there somewhere. There isn't. We have to run water over there. Um, so, like, not even for irrigation. There, there's nothing. They, no no. Water. Wow. Okay. There is a PVC pipe or something that runs under the road that they can run a hose through to water the field that they need to. Hmm. So they kind of snake the hose through there. Um, we have to pull off the line, which is right there, the fire hydrant and run a spigot out there, and that would probably be somewhere in the $1,500 to $2,000 range to put get water. Uh, we should have running water over there anyway. Uh, track meets football, hot weather, and I know it's hard to think about when it's 20 below out, but you get a spring day when it's 80 degrees and we're hosting a track meet and there's no water over there for the athletes to drink. And we, we offer it in the concession stand, but athletes shouldn't have to buy bottled water out of the concession stand to get a drink of water. So we should definitely look at getting water over there to spend it at a minimum. Anyone else? Anything else? Um, All right. We'll move on. Uh, Reed's not here. Anybody got anything for buildings and grounds slash transportation? Reed said that the bus, they're looking at having it here in March. Probably the end of March, right when it starts to warm up or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's that gasoline powered one? Yeah. yeah. Hey, can, I, can I go back hey, one step? Yeah. We talked about this with the trailer, the potential four years ago, let's say. Mm -hmm. I mean, for, you, you did quite a bit yep. of research on it, as I remember. I probably still got the paper somewhere. Why did we never sort of pull the trigger on that? You remember what, what the board's concerns were? Or? One of the different trailers they were looking at was um, who was going to take care of it, who was going to service it, who was going to, um, you know, as far as uh, clean it up, <coughs> who's going to move it, who's going to who's going to place it at the, all the different areas, and that's where we just could not get a. Um, so we were looking at the booster club at one point. Well, doing and, it. and the booster was looking at doing it, but at that point, the boosters really did not want to have anything to do with it. And I, and I think we had a we were looking at all inclusive ones with with cooking and cleaning and, and the expense was right. um, it was a lot more than five thousand uh, dollars what we're thinking about it was it was thirty forty it was up there okay. the deep was, fryer would be ugly to hmm? a deep fryer would be ugly to maintain if you had one of those Maybe yeah fryer yeah but, that's uh, I, uh, I think that's what, what we would mean. Or to even staff, you know what I mean? The people yeah. in there who's comfortable with the deep fryer. If you're not, you aren't. Yeah, we don't want anything like that. We just want to be able to do yep. taco meat, tacos in a bag, and pulled pork, and sloppy joes, stuff like you can serve out of the crock pot. Um, I've talked with Brent quite a bit about it, and I'd actually like to see our, our coaches take a little bit more responsibility in their fundraising with the, with the concessions. Um, and that would be like signing up for a night or two or however many we have, and then they would have to make sure the trailer was clean at the end of the day. So whatever group was working it, clean it, have it ready to go, lock it up, and then we move it to where we need it to go for the other. And we got the four wheeler that could be used to pull it around the property here. So um, the food would really be prepped in the kitchen here, right? Food would be prepped at wherever. It's AAA doing it. We prep the food with at whoever was fixing it, uh, like they've done in the past. And even last year, okay. we weren't supposed to, but we did a potato bar. All the food was prepped ahead of time, brought over there, and just served on the 
Because mm -hmm. I know that that's an issue too. If once you have a licensed place, you have to have the food prepped in yeah. a certified kitchen. I normally frown on making it in everyone's personal kitchens and then bringing them. I know that. Mm -hmm. so. You can use, I mean, from what I understand, you can use the Mahonak room. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here. Yeah. Although that's no longer a certified license kitchen. Oh, either. well, you used to be. You used to, yeah, when we had home Mac and stuff. Yeah. used to be. Okay. Well, when you get to that's my next question. So at $5,000, we don't have to necessarily have board action on that. We just have to direct somebody to start pursuing that, looking for. I guess it depends upon who buys it, well, if it's school district or if it's booster club. Yeah, if somebody else or, buys it, then it's, or it's a or it's a cost share between. Yeah. Well, I was talking with Jeff, and I'd like to see the school buy it, and then we charge a small rental fee for it. If the community ed wants to use it during the summer, and Brent wants to take it to a youth baseball game out here, when they have two to three hundred people showing up for 11, 12 year old baseball games, so I'm charging 25, 50 bucks, whatever off the top and put that back in to cover insurance, licensing, or whatever we need to cover it for that. Once again, is that, I mean, we got six weeks away, maybe two weeks optimistic, or two months optimistically away from needing that, using I that? I don't look at getting it this year. If we can, great. Um, this year, he said that he's not going to, as long as we have water out there, he's not going to do anything with this issue. Oh, we have a Gatorade jug out there that's got a ball valve on it or something. There's water to wash your hands. Mm -hmm. We'll still do just the minimums. We'll do pre-prepared food like Papa or, uh, Godfather's pizzas and stuff that's already pre-prepared. Uh, the food inspector wasn't keen on that, like he said, but um, he said that it's for now, as long as we've got the water out there. He said this year, we'll let you float. Uh, next year, you have no prepared food unless you have water out but effectively, all we're dealing with is track out there at this point anyway. Yeah. I mean, baseball, softball. So baseball and softball don't have anything anyway. There'd be two home track dates. Yeah. But, you, I mean, if you really want to get this going, softball yeah. and baseball well, would work. having the trailer because they have 10 home games apiece. Yeah. So, so maybe, I don't know how you look for it. I mean, do we look at you and say, find it? Or do we all say, we'll put our ear to the ground right now and start finding what's available? Uh Whatever you want to do. I mean, I can start looking for stuff. I mean, last year, I know I found one. It was out in Watertown. They were selling it. A school was selling it because they had finally got their levy passed and built their concession stand. So, I mean, there's stuff out there. It's on eBay, on Craigslist, on Facebook. You just have to yeah, start looking for it. Do you think by the next meeting or two, you could look, look enough at least to possible. give us an idea of what we're getting ourselves into for an expense? Okay. I mean, I think that would be a why procrastinate it? I mean, we got it. Next thing we put it off, then it's not available for football again next year. We're back in the same thing. Uh, I might not be a silly question, but do we have electricity at these we locations? We have electricity at football field, we have electricity at the softball field, and we have a generator at the baseball field. Okay. So the generator, we have to maybe have a second generator because the one for the baseball field is the, for the scoreboard which is all the way out in the left field. Okay. Been there. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you out there a lot. Oh, it ran out of gas. <laughs> all right, anything else? We will move along to uh, community end. Brent? Um, not a lot this month. Um, some registration numbers. We have 14 in the weight room. That's the, we're up six from last month. Um, Emily Durkin's hit class, she has 12 members this month, and we're sitting at 11 for our NMPR tree. Um, basketball, we just uh, wrapped up last Saturday for uh, most of the teams. Our third and fourth grade girls have been tomorrow here against Rogue, our world. Um, so that's uh, winding down. New classes, we have rod building with Ralph Dobberson this in March here. Um, and our TriStar Basketball Challenge, that's a kind of one name um, challenge for the kids K through eight, where they just kind of show up their skills and we work the trophies the first second of their place by their age, position, and their gender. Um, for archery, 
agreed that we have a certification where we're going to look to get hopefully three or four more coaches certified. It's coming up in middle of March. And our next um, advisory council meeting is set for March 7th at 4 30. TriStar is March 9th. Yep. And I did have one thing I wanted to mention. Um, we were talking about uh, they're going to fix the road and maybe put some access points in. And I was thinking for um, baseball fields, it would be nice to have an access kind of straight out from right field of the uh, varsity field. Because I've always had a concern about you know, where the current parking place is. I mean, there's cars that are parked terribly close to the fall lines. And I really hate to see, you know, kids running around right where these cars are being parked. And I've seen, you know, baseballs have hit cars before last summer out there. And uh, maybe long term future, I would like to see a good parking lot over by right field of the varsity field to stay away from um, kind of field of play areas. There's a lot more room over there. I guess if you're going to do it, maybe do it now. So uh, you don't want to be able to get that chance to get it. Could either put a stake in the ground, paint, or I'll swing by and see you and point out, or let me know where you want it. Okay. <laughs> All right. We can we can work something out. Any questions? Hey, parking lot would be nice too. I'm also working with Brent trying to get online registration for the area. Okay. Similar to the R school, with the R school program, we're going to allow a community network in there too. Okay. And would that allow, I was talking about it with Mr. Nowak earlier, uh, communication it would be, I don't know, we got to improve it somehow. Uh, like this weekend, I guess the girls, was it the fifth graders were going to Kellier and that was canceled. But there was all these email texts and stuff flying back and forth. And I guess, I don't know if the coaches figured it out or how they did. Well, then I've got a girl in sixth grade and they were playing here. So never would you wonder, are we still on? It's like, well, it's after nine. So if it was going to be canceled, I Falls is already going to be here. So and it turned out they we played and everything else. Uh, but I know we had run into this before, like with softball when it was practice, and then if it's kind of left up to the coaches, it, it, you end up with, well, I want to communicate on Facebook, I want to communicate on Instagram, I want to communicate this way. And so others just flat out don't don't communicate. If we can have some school, I mean, if it's a it's community ed, so it's a school function. So let's try and use the school systems. Our contact system has the it. capability to. The community had on there. Okay. So, I mean, it would just be getting everything in one place. And Brad and I have actually talked about that too. Because that would be everything on that calendar. Yeah, that would work out ideal. And then, even however you want to do it, if the coach contacts you or whoever the contact is, or the coaches have the ability to do it. But, yeah, we're. So, this last weekend, um, we made the call to cancel and tell you just after eight. And uh, I had sent out an email to. All the parents that I had involved okay. at that point in time. Um, but then again, you know, I get registrations with all emails on. Yep. And um, then I also start my coaches to you know, have a text group to text the parents if there's something changed. And I know for the, the Guy Falls game, um, I actually called their coach like three times because they never answered. <laughs> so I, I really didn't want to say any, you know, say anything yep. and, and then they should show it up. So that's kind of how things went down this weekend. But, but yeah, communication is it's always one of those things where it's never never good enough. Um, but we uh, hopefully we can get from our start to get everyone on the same page there. Perfect. Anyone else? Yeah. Well, that wraps up our uh, assigned things. Uh, anything else? Anyone? All right, we had a meet and confer, <clears throat> and. Uh, just two things. One, I, the teacher reps who were in there were really complimentary to Crystal and Cindy about the in-service presentations for both fall and January. They said that those were as good as they've been part of, so you know you're being appreciated. Because um, I think the two of you are responsible for setting that up. I, I don't know the specifics of what you do there, but they said to point it out and say thank you, so I did it publicly. And 
Well, thank them. They were pleased with it. A couple other items on there that I won't go into, but one of the questions that came up we discussed at length had to do with the supervision of kids in that gray area from 3.30 in the afternoon to 6 o'clock at night. You know, you're getting parents. Wasn't that the discussion? And in the morning, too. In the mornings as well. Right. And I'm not sure we came to a resolution on that, so everybody can sort of think about it, but that weird time of day, Bertle, you'd be aware of that, too, where you've got kids in the school sometimes, but who aren't here with parents. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, they're playing basketball or they're in the common room hanging out, but there is not a specific supervision there in how you address that or how we look at that in school. They felt there was, you know, not a problem yet, but it was certainly a concern. You know, you've got open building, unsupervised kids, and right now the right kids are doing it. So maybe the kids who were going to misbehave would probably take off anyway. They don't want to be in school. I don't know. But anyway, just something that people can think about how we address that in the future if that's a problem. Was there a concern about the time that students come in the morning and as far as being non-supervised, like they would come at, parents drop them off at like 7.15 or something like that? I don't know. Do you get kids in here at that time? I mean, I guess they did mention morning, but I didn't get the sense that there was as much of a problem with morning as there was in the afternoon. Right. And there wasn't an issue either way at the time. It was just there was a, you know, there's a, I don't know, you would even call it a potential, but it was an awareness that it could be, I guess. And that's where we kind of left it was, you know, yeah, maybe we do need to to look at it or at least we address it a little bit or bring it up that issue they brought it up and it's you know do you address a problem before it becomes a problem or right. are you proactive on it or whatever okay wrote that down i'll talk to jeff too that's actually in the student handbook i seem to remember some thing in there about supervision but mm -hmm. Might have been not during those hours. Staff, we got another topic. Yeah, another one. We went to Jeff and Lynn and I went to negotiation seminar in Deep River Falls last week. Um, general, what do you expect? I mean, nothing new and different. Uh, and I think it's probably more pertinent to people like Jeff, just because there was a lot of legal changes every year that occur in that that you have to pay attention to. Well, they had a specific discussion of the Janus situation, you know, the federal court ruling on that and how that gets handled negotiations. But do you remember what you said about it? I, I got the sense that it was don't bring it up unless they do. Yeah, and it, it was it really had to do with that language that we ended up putting in the NSA contract okay. about the liability of um, the of the school for the reporting, okay. the reporting as well as the employee deductions. Okay. And it went the way we had guided the. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. For anybody who doesn't know, the Janus it has to do with unions, and it was decided that you couldn't force them. Tell me if I'm wrong. Basically, it says you can't force somebody to be in the union, and you can't force them to pay dues, and, and that's kind of what. The fair share dues. The fair yeah. share dues. Mm -hmm. um, that's where. That's what kind of prompted it. Anymore, there was a lengthy discussion on insurance that I probably should have just gone out and drank coffee and ate donuts <laughs> with. It we went right over my head, but there was a guy who was just so dry and specific about the insurance stuff. And when he got done, he walked over to to us at the table <laughs> and Lake of the Woods, and all he wanted to do was show me pictures of all the fish he caught, <laughs> Lake of the Woods, pictures of his dad. I mean, he was just so ener energetic. So people are excited about being in Lake of the Woods, even when they don't live here. It was nice to see. He was a good guy. And he talked 100 miles an hour. Yeah, he would have fit right in on this board. <laughs> got a few minutes. Any other topics? Anyone? I got one. You do have the world's best workforce. Uh -huh. We had one of those meetings. Go ahead, summarize. Oh, well, there was a lot of material presented. Correct. That okay. we can review until March 12th, I think, and then we meet again about yeah. Um, everything from test scores was and really test the, scores and demographics. Yep. Um, there was one, it's sort of an interesting, and I, I guess you say this publicly without putting pressure on parents again, but we qualify for more money if we qualify for free and reduced lunch, right? The percentages go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And 
we're pushing 50% as a school district right now with people who are registered for free and reduced lunch. And the thought is that we're not tapping into the sum total, right? I mean, there are people out there who still don't sign up for free and reduced. Mm -hmm. I think it's just, it's not a question of, I hope it's not a question of pride. It's just a question of awareness as to how your income sort of reflects in, in terms of the rest of the state's income. We're not an affluent community, never will be. Um, so that if we can get everybody to sign up for free and reduced lunch, what it does is, it starts to change the uh, success rate we've had or we have at educating lower income people, which is what the state is really looking for, closing that disparity gap where affluent people get educated better than non-affluent people. And if you can get people more to sign up on free and reduced lunch, you will naturally just close that gap with how you're educating your, your kids. You know, it's, it's an interesting dynamic at work right now, but if we can encourage everybody who's available for it, to sign up for free and reduce lunch, I think you could see our success rate at education, at least in the state size, way better. Any more? No, that's it. Okay. <laughs> I guess I got one point to bring up. I was reading somewhere, and there's sounds like the state's putting grant money available, some money available, if the school's interested in adding solar systems to their school. I don't know if it's feasible. I don't know what's involved or anything like that, but it's like, huh. We learned about it at the MSBA conference. Was it MSBA? No. No, the region. No, Madison. Madison. Oh, Madison. Yeah. Yeah. Madison. And there is grant funding available, but I talked to Reed about it and he said, he said to talk to Robin. He said, they will tell you how effective solar is here. Yeah. And it's not. Yeah. Well, too high a ladder to kind of thing. Horrible. Yeah. Well, that, and that's, that's not touching it. Yeah. So then you put time and effort into touching it to clear it, to clean it, to move the snow off of it. And then how efficient is that, either, you know, as well? Yep. We get like four hours of sunlight per day on average year round. So it's really not that efficient. Yep. Yeah, I went, I went to the seminar down there and I was all excited. I thought we were going to get money and we were going to be green and it was going to be great. And I told Reed and he squashed it like a bug. <laughs> he did. Yeah. And, and besides that, the payback is like so long. I don't think yeah. the panels really would even last as long as, you know, they say, oh, you know, it's a 30 year payback. They're not even going to. I actually think your panels are set up wrong, but that's beside the point. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. I mean, just throwing it out there. I think things like going LED versus. I think yeah, you get more bang out of your for the efficiency more. is. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. Besides, every time if you put those uh, solar good. panels up on the roof, every time you yeah. put somebody up there to clean it, you know, of course, we've got the flat roof here. Yep. Put an extra wear and tear on that. Yeah. You've got about three feet of snow up there right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that they're like 11 percent efficient. Yeah, and that, well, I think even 20%, and that's like super efficient for solar panels right now. So, yeah, they're not very efficient. No. Oh, well, wind turbines on top of the roof. Paid for it yesterday, right? In one day. Yeah. What? All right, anyone else? If not, we'll adjourn the working session. We'll take a break till uh, 7 o'clock. I can. I'd like to take your picture with your certificate. There we go. Board recognition. Okay. And a bar. Should we each hold a bar? You should, yes. Okay. <laughs> Woody's going to take your picture. Wait a minute now. No, no, you got it, Woody. <laughs> what do you want us, Woody? Left. Here's the right here. Yeah, I couldn't find it. Good job, good job. You need to watch me fight with my camera. I hate it, but this camera is smarter than me. Do you want me to get my camera ready? No. Because what it does is people are laughing at me. Yeah. Well, I'm not just watching it. Yeah. 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 Better up here. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's that? No. no. Yeah, yeah, I was joking. It's all about cross country ski thing. Oh, okay. Pull them out of the snowbank. All right. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you, guys. Thank you for that. Thanks, Thanks for that. Where's your daughter going? Doesn't she have a great time? Great time. She got tired of listening to it. I've had like six today. Older than me. Six is just one of the cool things. Yeah. 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 That's not guilt coming out of your mouth, is it? Yeah. Yep. February 18th through the 22nd is the dates on that. And sometime this spring, Randy and River would like to get together with the sports committee and go over our agreements and and join forces in basketball? <laughs> yes, I want to push for that. But, uh, we'll go over the agreements and the fees and, and stuff like that and where they are and just just talk about it a little bit. Because didn't you say like basketball and like one or two others? Or is there just basketball? So Somebody was saying something to me. Was it you? I probably was. Yeah. Like basketball and like was there something else? Yeah, yeah boys basketball. And they have girls volleyball and girls basketball. With the girls basketball, volleyball, the, the seasons are opposite. Yeah. Um, boys basketball, they run at the same time as volleyball to help with costs. Mm. So, but they only play like six or eight games a year. Oh. So, yeah. But they have to go to Red Red Lake and. That's like a three hour drive alone. Well, yeah. They, they travel six to eight hours for some of their games. Oh my gosh. So, what, volleyball stuff, are boys volleyball a fall sport for them? Yes. And the, are they thinking of inviting some of ours no, over? No, they've, they've talked about that and their Canadian League won't let that happen. But I'd like to see them join us for boys basketball <coughs> and, yeah. and why not girls volleyball and just organize things a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Maybe, and they could actually, if the kids could work it out, they could play ball for Softball, girls softball is the other one. Boys basketball and girls softball would be the ones that I'd like to see them at least consider. Um, their assistant principal might end up helping out as one of our track coaches this year. Good. So that would help with some relations type stuff. Yeah, that'd be a nice little, I mean, plus it would help with that sort of liaison between kids, you know, getting them to be interested in what we got. But yeah, they'd like to look at the, the fee structure and see if we want to keep that the same and what it is. is I know hockey's considerably more. Basketball, baseball, football is not a whole lot more. It's like $25 or $50 more. Anyway, I'll get a hold of them and then have them give us some dates and I'll get back to you guys and we'll see when the time to get together would be good. Yeah, you'd think we could figure out these. I mean, hockey is just... Yep.
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, switch to the right one. Did call the order, allegiance. Uh, need a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion. I'll make a second. Motion on Stigard, second by Lyon. All in, any discussion? All in favor? I'll wait. Should that oh, read wait. with those two items struck? Well, that is. B and e struck. I don't know if that, if you need to do that or not. Yes, means, I think you do. Is that it's changed? Yeah. We got okay. X'd out on E and. E okay. E. All right. Uh, changes are. Items nine, D and nine E. Yeah, they've got they've got me two different versions going on here. Let me get that one. Oh, we draw. Okay, we're talking. At least. Oh, the lease. Did you get the agreement? Yeah, I got it. I gave it to him Friday. Oh, the reason I got it. Well, fire away. I mean, we've got to adjust it, you know. This is time to say something, otherwise, we're going to strike it. Well, part of the reason why that was cropped off, and I'm just going to say this because he can't see. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Occasionally, I met with Mike Schultz and Dan, and the chance that building not going to be done in time for the golf class. Uh, I'm already set up where I'm at, so I left it with Mike because I'd be more happy to look at it next year when they got a manager in place and hired out the deal. I might as well stay where I'm at right now. Because he starts practice on the 18th of March, March, and he can't guarantee them that they're going to be that's going to even be available. So. Okay. So that was what, what that uh, he actually does have the agreement, and Chad has it. Chad's got the so, agreement. Chad so, so left alone, it's still yeah, going to work where it did last year. Correct. Yeah. Well, he didn't have the machine. Yeah, see if he's still around. <laughs> and neither did Otto Valley. Thank you, Cindy. Yeah. So it's fine if we strike oh, the one that's out here right so now, because that's okay. with the new arena. Yeah. 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 Approval use. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we'll okay. give him a few minutes and yeah. see if we can find Chad. Double check. Okay. Well, can we just leave that in and then vote it down when we get there? Sounds like a good idea. And then we can get on with other stuff. Yeah, we'll leave it in. Okay, so we'll leave in item D. Mm -hmm. We'll nix item E. Yeah. Everyone okay with that? Yep. Sure. Yep. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, same sign. The approval of the agenda motion carries. Uh, now we'll go for I need a motion and a second for the approval of the cons consent agenda. Consent agenda includes approval of the previous minutes, approval of invoices and statements, personnel resignation, retirements, and appointments. We've got one resignation, uh, Brenda Nelson, teacher, uh, maternity leave for Nicole. Got no, uh, Piala. 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 Okay. And all the rest look like Coaches coaching and... positions, with the exception of the last one. That's the hire Jeff Burcham as the junior high umpire for the 2019 baseball season. Uh, need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda, please. Motion by Ellis. Right, second it. Second by Lyons. Any discussion? Uh, do you have a copy of Brenda's uh, retirement letter? It's, it, yes, it's in the. It was yeah, in the, it was in the packet. I didn't know if you had oh. it right up there. We have a paper copy. Do you want? Yeah, to if you got it right there, just I mean, you should read it off in, I mean, thirty-five years. Do you if you're. Copies for everybody. Um. For the lease agreement. Yeah, I think Ted. Is it any different than last year, Ted? Yeah, I can start day one. 
No, they just made it. Those what did he say? Everything's the same. Yeah. Other than last, they made it um, March 15th this year. I can go March 1 if I want. Okay. Work, but, okay. I but otherwise, it's the same agreement as last year. Yeah. Okay. $4. Okay. Perfect. Do you want copies of it or no? Uh, no, I don't think that. Uh, well, do you guys all want copies of the lease agreement? Anyone? Let's put this way. Does anybody want a copy of the lease agreement? No, I thank you. Not. Okay. No, okay. we're good. I can add it okay. later. Yep, so that'd, be great. Look at it. that'd be good. Thank you. We got that. Okay. Uh, all right. From Brenda Nelson, please accept this notice of my retirement effective May 28th, 2019. I have appreciated the past 34 years of service in this school system. I feel blessed to teach with excellent staff and meet the needs of my many students over the years. Thanks to all who have made this possible. Sincerely, sincerely Brenda Nelson. And we'd like to give a big thank you to Brenda Nelson. For 34 years, that's a lot of life. That's a long time. So with that, we've got a motion, we've got a second. All in favor, say aye. Oh, wait, aye. We had somebody yelling. Oh, yep. Good question. Sure. Have you uh, had sign-up for spring sports yet? I have no idea what that means. The was. meeting is the 28th. Thursday, yeah. Thursday, yeah. yeah. Thursday at 5. Thursday at 5 o'clock. So you're hiring all these coaches and you're going to be all competing? Well, we're having, I mean, it, it's contingent upon there being enough players. If there aren't players, obviously the program won't continue and we won't need the coaches. I think there's, there's a, in the contract? Yes, yes, and it, it was yeah. added in a couple of years ago because we had that issue. I remember about four mm -hmm. years ago where yep. we didn't have enough kids at one level to go ahead and make a team. So when they sign, and I don't have a copy of the in front of me, but they it says provided there are right. enough. Do you want to see one? Yeah, does it say at the bottom of it? Yeah, provided like in this part right here. Yes, I assume this is general same for all of them. I hereby agree that I have read and understand the terms of my employment as outlined above. Uh, and up above is just the specific title and whatever they're going to be teaching. Uh, this one happens to be Don Krauss, NHS advisor. I understand and agree that sh uh, should student partition participation fall below the number required to form a competitive team that this agreement may be terminated with only written notice from the district. Does that satisfy your concerns? And one other question I have is when we get into uh, combined sports with other schools, is there any set number or direction as to how many participants from Lake and Woods are required before we could do it? I don't know. That's that's a discussion for more. This is more of a discussion more for a working session. So, unless it's specifically to an item on the agenda right now, I, I guess we'll we'll look into it. Be happy to look into it and address it later. But right now, we're just going with the tasks at hand. A, a quick answer that I know when we talked about co-oping with the the hockey team, it was just kind of agreed upon with Mr. Hazelton that there was a number. It was six, I remember it, the number being that we needed from Lake of the Woods. For the girls. To, for the girls to, to make that happen with a co-op. We did not, and, uh, you know, that so we didn't go forward with it. It's kind of a, a number that's agreed upon that's satisfied to reach our goals of, you know, what we need to do. I think it took the finances in as well. I mean, hockey's pretty expensive sport, you know that. And I think that we looked at that and said, all right, we need to make this work. You know, we kind of looked at other sports and saw our commitment there. But I would say. I would imagine it would be different for. Like basketball. Different sports. Or, yeah. yeah. So, but you're, that's what you're wondering is just, is it cost feasible to have one person, for instance, go into a co-op like a girls hockey? And at that point, the board said, no, it wasn't going to happen. Because I think we had one, right? We just had the one. Yeah, that's the one discussion. Well, that's all right. You're, you're a regular. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, so we got the motion the second. Uh, all in favor of passing the consent agenda, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Do we have any board presenters? We have two. 
Not this month. Not this month. Nope. Okay. <laughs> oh, I thought they were here. Oh. <laughs> Present communications. Okay. We'll go with nothing. Old business. Got the third reading of the wellness policy, 533. I'll make a motion to approve that policy. <clears throat> approve the third reading of the policy. Okay. And is that the approval? We're yep, then it should be done. Anybody want to read it again, or are we good? No, we're good. All right, it's a long one. So we have a, we got a motion to approve the read the third wellness policy number five thirty three. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Second by Trask. Any more discussion? All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, now we also have the third re reading of the procurement card policy number 721. Anybody need a reading of that before we continue? Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion. motion. Motion by Bertram. Second. Second by Lyon. Any more discussion? Last chance. All in favor? Say by signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. And on the new business. Presentation of Lake of the Woods American Indian Education Advisory Committee resolution issuing a vote of concurrence. And what that concurrence resolution is, is basically saying that the things that we are doing with our American Indian Education Advisory Committee and all the different things that are set up with that, with our, with our coordinator and director, we are doing those things. We are, our school is living up to and providing for our students um, that direct correlate with things that are going on with the uh, Indian Advisory Committee. So. Do, we need any, do we need any official action for any of that? Jeff, there's a resolution. There's a resolution. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jeff, Jeff said I don't oh, no think board we need action. Yeah, oh, no board action? Yeah. Yep. yeah. I don't think we need to. That committee votes on that committee whether votes we on as a board are oh, operating properly with yeah. the presentation of the. Okay. I would. Uh, I didn't invite. When, when did we have that the the program that was here? Was that in the last month or so? Yeah, that was in the last month. Yeah, uh, I didn't invite anybody to go to that. What a what a really good program they had put on. Uh, they had dancers and drums and uh, person from U, U of M Morris. I think I was presenting it just a very good pro excellent program they worked with our student body in oh, junior high and had everybody out there dancing and our choir was singing to the drums and it was a was that the meaning of the treaty was that the pamphlet that nope. i saw or was that different that was something that was different okay i was thinking we needed I, excellent yeah, program was too. yeah yeah because the board has to sign off on that that was the board chair it. the board yeah. chair okay. has okay. to sign off on it so and with that, we'll move on to the approval of changes to the 2018-2019 school calendar making. First one is designate Monday, May 22nd as a school day uh, April for staff and students. Do we have to do these separately or these yeah, together? Yeah, because before you vote on that one, we just wanted on record that the write-up sheet in the board packet was incorrect and that it, according to the contract, they'll just be paid for that day and their holiday pay. Okay. Not time and a half and a holiday pay. It's just day pay, regular pay. Okay. So before you vote on that. Okay. So do we have a, I need a motion? It's April 22nd, right? April 22nd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did I say May? Yep. yep. <laughs> April 22nd. Said April I'll right make there. that motion. Motion and motion by Ellis. Second by Lyon. Second by Lyon. Any more discussion? Are we all good with? Changing the dates, 22nd. I think maybe it should include both of those items, shouldn't it? The, with the conference with you? Yeah. I didn't know. I believe it should. Okay. 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 Because you're changing the, ca the calendar. You're changing as a the whole. calendar as a whole. So I think I should amend my motion to amend my motion to um, setting those. Um, 
teacher conferences, February 26th by 3.30, 7.30, and elementary on Thursday, April 11th at 3.30 to 7. And you're assuming that the first subheading is going to be approved in C? No, that's next year's calendar, Jeff. Oh, okay. This is the changes of the 2018-19. So I think they should both be in one motion. Okay. Do you go along with the amended motion? Yes, I will second the amended motion. The amended motion is seconded. Any more discussion on the motion? We'll go through it. I just looked at that. Okay. In that case, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed, same side. Motion carries unanimously. That brings us up to the next one of approving the 2019-2020 school calendar as presented in our board packet. Need a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Bircham. I'll second. Second by Sonstegard. Any discussion about that calendar? Fred? Just to reiterate that Monday in April, that if we have to use it, that we'll be running into the same issue as we did this year. And we'd like to use that last if we could. Yes. And that's what the calendar committee, you guys hashed that all out and everything, and that's obviously what was agreed upon. That was my understanding from the meeting. Okay. Anyone else? In that case, everyone in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. We are going to reinstate or leave in item D, barring any other valid reason for not doing it. Everyone okay with that? Okay. In that case, I need a motion for the approval to approve the lease agreement with Harmon Place Properties, LLC for Lake of the Woods Golf Team. And you said the cost was $4, right? What was the cost? $4. The cost $4 for the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's not the size of pay. I don't know if we can afford it or not. Yeah. I don't know if I can afford it this year. Motion by Bircham. Motion by Bircham. Do I have a second? Second by Lyon. Second by Lyon. Lyon. Any more discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And we deleted item E, so we'll go on to F. Adopt resolution 2018-2019-09 to accept donation from Wickstrom Telephone Company. Do you know what the donation was? $100. Oh, $3,617. Yeah, $3,000. Yeah, that one was a lot. Okay. For the technology. All right. Money for technology. Thank you very much, Wickstrom Telephone Company. Need a motion? Motion by Lyon. Motion by Lyon. I'll second. Second by Sonstegard. Any more discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Item G, adopt resolution 2018-2019-10 to accept donation from Lyon Sleepers. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Motion by Ellis, second by Lyon. Thank you very much. Discussion, and I'll lead by saying thank you very much. Lyon Sleepers. Oh, or is this the new Lyon Sleepers? This is the old Lyon Sleepers. But my question is, we've done this in the past. It's for the book drive. This is Maya's book drive. But this is the first time it's ever been on the public ledger. I mean, I just assumed that that was a, here's some money, you know, for the book drive. Why does it get put into the board packet? Because it's a donation. I understand it's a donation, but it's never come up publicly before. It's just not a big deal. I don't know. Was it given to the school directly or given to Mrs. Mai first? 
I couldn't tell you. My wife wrote the check. Was, I just know that's what I'm guessing that it was given to Mrs. Mai, so then we didn't know that you, oh. you guys gave her the money. Oh, since it came right to the school, then all, she just gave all us. the donations. I write a, a resolution. That's fine. Like so I that said. they publicly get thanked for giving to the school. Well, that's fine. It's just it would I, I contributed half as much as Dave Byers did. It pisses me off that publicly I have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, call me up and say, Sid, you don't put it in. Yeah. And then keep it anonymous. Yeah. Yes, keep it anonymous. Sorry, Tim. It's all right. I got to put up with Byers for a year at the golf course now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Ended up with a lot of discussion on that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's in all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Item H, adopt resolution 2018-2019-11 to accept donation from the Rotary Club of Claudette. I'll make that motion. Motion by Ellis. Second by Bertram. Second by Bertram. Any discussion on that one? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. And motion carries unanimously. And thank you very much, Rotary Club of Claudette. Uh, item I, adopt resolution 2018-2019-12 to accept donation from the American Legion Gambling Fund. Need a motion. I will make that motion by Lyon. Motion by Lyon. I'll second. Second by Sonstegard. Any more discussion? In that case, we are, once again, thank you, American Legion Gambling Fund. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Item J, adopt resolution 2018-2019-13 to accept donation from the Moose Lodge Gambling Fund. I'll make that motion. Motion by Trask. Second by Bertram. Second by Bertram. Thank you very much, Moose Lodge Gambling Fund. Any more discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Item K, adopt resolution 2018-2019-14 to accept donation from Walleye Capital San Sanitation. I'll make the motion. Motion by Bertram. Second by Lyon. Second by Lyon. Uh, any more discussion? Thank you, Walleye Capital Sanitation, for your donation. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Item L, adopt resolution 2018-2019-15 to accept donation from Kevin and Oprah? Orpha. 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 Poland. Um, I'll make that motion. I'll motion second. by Ellis, second by Sonstegard. Any further discussion? Thank you very much, Kevin and Orpha. Poland. Sorry, both. Up the name. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries as uh, motion carries unanimously. Any other board business? Going once, going twice. In that case, uh, at seven twenty-four, the meeting is adjourned. Good job. Did you give me a specific example? One last or second question. Are you thinking hockey? No. Or are you worried about our kids getting pushed out by their kids? That's the numbers. Okay. I'm just trying Did to you think of the last meeting. I need what? you to no, sign these. No, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. What am I no. signing yeah. here? Donnie Krause from December. Okay. You ready for all or, these? Um, yeah, I got whatever. Uh, NHL said so that.